Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Chicago White Sox baseball. There is a threat of thunderstorms later on this evening, but right now it is just a lovely night for baseball. It'll be McCray, Gibson, and George Brett to face Garcia. Boy, has he been impressive. Ramon has just been outstanding. As you look at the numbers on Brian McCray, one for three last evening. He is four for 12 this year against White Sox pitching. Sox coming in with a 4-0 mark versus the Royals. They swept them at Royal Stadium. First time they've done that since 1974. Fastball off the plate and the ball game is underway. Brian, good speed. Ventura in on the grass at third. There's a change over and the count. The one and one. Outfield bunched and they are swung slightly around to the right. 347 down each line here at beautiful Comiskey Park. 375 in the power alleys and 400 straight away center field. Curve ball. He lays off of it. Oh, yes, he did, says Greg Kosk. As you look at, there's Wimpy's favorite. Al. Now, how see? does he get? Who does he know That's, to have his name put on his hand like that? There's somebody in high places. I oh, know that. Oh, man, for sure. That's inside. Count two and two. So as Wimpy mentioned, the Royals had won three in a row prior to last evening. They swept the Orioles. Sox had lost three in a row, taking the first of that four-game series in the Rangers and losing the last three. Watch out. He knocks it down. He has plenty of time. Oh. And I hope that that did not. It looked like it got him, hopefully not on the wrist. There was a rocket. Well, Ramon was cool and calm about it, though, wasn't he? Here's just a bullet. Fastball up and out over the plate, and he scalds it right back at Ramon. It looked like he almost caught it in his glove, but very cool, calmly, casually, throws it over to the first base, and there's one out. Meanwhile, he'll go in the dugout at the end of the inning and just scream, yeah, <laughs> that hurts. But right now, he's got his game face on. He's got that good face as we talk about so often as Kirk Gibson steps in. 34-year-old veteran hitting at 227, eight homers. He has knocked in 23. Two for three last evening. And he is three for 12 cumulative against White Sox pitching this year. There's that good face. We don't talk about those things enough. Boy, it gets that certain look. Change, little low in the count, one and nothing. The one thing you got to say about Ramon is he has a great ability to concentrate on every pitch. You know, nothing gets him down. You can't, he can't pitch too bad. Good oh, change yes. again. Gibson <laughs> out in front. <laughs> he will throw that. In fact, he'll throw anything he has of the four pitches. That's why he has been so impressive. Ramon, a minor league record since he came into professional baseball of 23 and 8. Fastball off the outside corner, 2 and 1. Gibson cranked out his 200th career home run day before yesterday against the Orioles, becoming only the 13th player to have 200 home runs and 200 stolen bases. Ooh, pretty good pitch right there. Didn't get it. And the count three and one. There you see he has done some damage against White Sox pitching in his career. Still runs well. And with the injury to George Brett's knee, George, for the most part, is going to be relegated to the DH role, maybe for the rest of his career. Gibson is going to have to play. There's oh, a yes. good fastball strike on the outer half, and the count goes full. You know, the Sox have had great success this season whenever they've gone upstairs with the fastball to Kirk Gibson. Well, he's become a dead low ball hitter and a better breaking ball hitter. Well, you said it last night, Wimpy, and it's so true. As you get older, you become a better low ball hitter. Uh-oh. That's it deep. Way back. You can put it on the board. Ninth homer for Gibson, and the Royals lead it one to nothing. Well, it's just a solo shot. 
Thank goodness for that. But the thing he made a mistake probably by throwing the change up to Gibson right there. He had him way out in front on the first pitch. But this time Gibson waited back. Probably sitting on change up right there. Te check out the replay. It's right there. Just below the belt and on the inside part of the plate. His hand stayed back nicely right there. He was able to drive this out of here without little, without too much doubt it being a homer. So one nothing Kansas City and here's George. 38 year old veteran. There's a breaking ball strike. George one for three last evening. Last 38 at bats has 14 hits. That'll pencil out to 368. That fastball back and quickly the count 0 and 2. One of the most impressive things about Ramon Garcia in his major league debut against the Oakland A's, a little while, walked the bases loaded in the very first inning, threw a 2 1 fastball to Mike Gallego, hit a grand slam, then he retired the next 11 in a row. Off the plate. One and two the count. Pretty good hitter on the left right there, Hal McRae. Yeah, very good hitter. Oh, boy. Shot base hit right back through the middle. Off-speed pitch. Well, we talked about what he has done. There you see his... Three starts, seven innings against Oakland. A grand slam in the first inning by Gallego. We only gave up one other hit against Cleveland. Six hits in seven innings. Four of those were little duck snorts. And three hits against the Rangers, his last outing. Bring so me the arm of Ramon Garcia. Well, mm -hmm. he's. Uh, That's a sequel to the movie that you saw? Yeah, bring me the head of Alfredo Garcia. That's it deep into right center field. Way back. Pasqua looks up. You can put this one on the board. Two run homer for Tardibull. And it's quickly a 3 0 Kansas City lead. Mercy. Well, Danny Tardibull's got great power the other way. And you throw him anything downstairs, probably. That fastball downstairs is something that he just likes to wail on. Tenth home run this season. He's now has 35 RBIs. For Gibson, that was home run number nine. But check it out right there. Fastball pretty much middle of the plate, thigh high. That's in that do not disturb zone that Danny, pa Danny Tartable, that is, has. Drives it hard to right center. No doubt about this one. You see him make that good contact out in front of the plate. His hands were slightly in front of the barrel of the bat. That's why it went in that direction. Inside out swing. My goodness, he heard it. Very powerful man, Danny Tartable. As Eisenreich takes the ball. Tartable now with 10 homers, 35 ribbies. Danny has missed nine of the last 12 games with a hand injury. A changeup cued left side. Ventura's got it underneath. And there's two gone. But certainly a different looking Kansas City lineup than the one the Sox saw at Royal Stadium. Signs Tartable. Oh, no doubt about it. Danny Tartable leading the ball club in home runs and RBIs when you don't have his bat in the lineup. Plus, he's got a great throwing arm from right field. You mentioned that last night. And Hal McRae likes to see him in that number four spot. He makes George Brett that much more dangerous, too. And all the hitters around him. Kevin Seitzer, the third baseman. Slider low and away. And Danny asked me if I would say hello to his parents who are watching tonight. I remember Danny when he was in diapers. Oh, Jose yeah. and Maria, I'll tell you, two outstanding. Of course, Jose and I played together at Kansas City and Boston. There's a curveball strike. Two wonderful people. Danillo. I'm sure you guys can laugh now. Yeah. Well, we get yeah. Big Frank up there. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Frank's going to be hitting this inning. Two and one to count to side, sir. I'll tell you what, we have seen some balls jump out of this park in this early stages of New Comiskey, haven't we, Hawk? Well, I'll tell you, 
I think it, from what I've seen, it's the best hitter's ballpark. Certainly in the American League. A changeup foul back. It is awesome. But you know, we, we said something in a in one of our previous broadcasts. I got a note on it yesterday from a very nice fan. These are not the longest lines in baseball. That's right. <laughs> right up the street. Really, two feet longer, or no, it's four feet longer, isn't it? Three fifty-one. Wrigley Field. That's off the end of the bat. Joey Carr will suck it up, throw him out, and that'll retire the side. But the Royals hit a couple of home runs here, score three, and after a half inning of play, is Kansas City three, and the Sox coming to bat. We go to the bottom half of the first inning here at Comiskey Park, and let's take a look at the Sox lineup. Given by manager Jeff Torborg, top three will have Reigns in left, Ventura at third, Frank Thomas is the DH, the middle third of Matt Marullo hitting cleanup at first base, Carlton Fisk at catcher, Danny Pasco plays right field. Bottom third of Lance Johnson in center field, Joey Cora at second, and Ozzie Guillen at shortstop. The defense for Kansas City has Gibson, McRae, and Tartable in the outfield. Sights are still well, Howard and Eisenreich around the horn, and Mike Boddicker and Mike McFarlane, the battery. And a look at the right-hander curveball specialist Mike Boddicker the starting pitcher. Tim Raines leads it off takes the curveball strike. Timmy hitting a 297 a couple of homers 21 RBIs three for three last evening. He also knocked in a pair. He is eight for 17 this year against Kansas City pitcher. Fastball jammed him. Sights her. And there's one gone. And there's a look at right-hander Mike Boddicker. He's making his 11th start on the season. He appeared once in relief. Five and five with a 3-3-1 earned run average. He has one complete game to his credit. Mike has worked 68 innings, given up just 54 hits, 25 walks, and he's struck out 24. American League batting just 220 against Boddicker this year. Curve ball right there to Robin. Over in the count, nothing and one. Robin hitting at 274. Up a little high. 21 to count. Takes a fastball inside. Two balls and a strike. Robin 7 for 17 this year against Kansas City pitching. Slashes this one going foul down the left field line. Well, we haven't made our picks to click yet. And it's my turn. Yes, you're five down. Okay, I'll go with Marullo again. All right. I'll go with uh, Big Frank. Gutsy <laughs> call once again. <laughs> well, I hope they all have great nights. Curve ball. That's a fair ball as Eisenreich picks it up. So two away. And here comes Big Frank. And this is the way Boddicker wants to face Frank Thomas with two out, nobody on. Boddicker, 5'11", 185 pounds out of Cedar Rapids, Iowa. There you see the numbers on Big Frank. Takes a fastball strike. Four for five last night, a homer. He knocked in five. Six for 17 this year against Kansas City pitching. With seven RBIs. Sidearm fastball catches the outer half. And the count quickly 0 and 2. Curveball hit foul. Oh, talking about that home run he hit last night. It was a high towering drive to right center field. For a second looked like he just missed it. Meanwhile that power of Frank Thomas took it out of here. Got him on a fastball upstairs. So a one two three inning for Boddicker here in the first and after one Kansas City leads it three to nothing. As Ricky Ramon Garcia ran into a buzzsaw top half of this frame or last first inning I should say 
Two home runs, one by Gibson, and a two run shot by Danny Tartable. And a reminder that if you are interested in obtaining a seat from Old Comiskey Park, there are still some available at $250, with proceeds going to White Sox Charities. Just order yours today by calling Ticketmaster at 312 831 1 Sox. Mike McFarland, the catcher, leads it off. McFarland hitting at 263, six homers, 20 RBIs. He did not play last evening against the Sox this year. He is two for seven with a homer, and he's knocked in two. And Mike wanted to be sure and say hello to his folks in Stockton, California, watching the game tonight. That fastball jammed him. It's going to be foul. That's a nice little town, Stockton. Oh, yeah, it is. I played Terrible. The California State League there. Terrible well, hitter's State. park. The what? worst. <laughs> Awful. Are you kidding me? The wind blew straight in the From sun. left. Yeah. Yeah, well. you got to go to right, Wimpy. Well, I did, but I mean, I still couldn't. <laughs> it just blew in. That was a terrible part. To oh, I, I, I like that. You funny. liked it? Yeah. Oh, and to the counts of McFarland. Of course, Ed Sprague, I believe, had that ball club out there at Yes, Stockton. he did. He is the father of the, oh, look at this, in severe on him. Father of Ed Sprague, who plays third base for Toronto. He had a pitcher in the Oakland organization. Wonderful guy. Nice guy. Once again, the 0-2 pitch. Little high neck in, and it's one and two. Some finals in the American League, a couple of them. Boston hammered California 13 to three at Fenway Park. Baltimore finally won a game. They beat Toronto eight to four up at Skydome. Slider outside, and the count evens at two. Oakland at Milwaukee trailing the Brewers six to three bottom of the sixth inning Minnesota <laughs> Cleveland, Cleveland seven to five that's in the bottom of the third at Cleveland Stadium Cleveland gets five runs in three innings and they're still losing by two breaking ball off the plate so the count is full to McFarland and later on the Tigers who beat the Mariners last evening will take on Seattle at the Kingdom. Fastball foul back, so the count hangs full. And while we have a moment, want to send out a big White Sox happy birthday to a good friend and a fellow who does an awful lot of hard work around the new ballpark as he did around the old one, Ron Graff, who is the electrician. He's the fellow that has to wire all these things and make them work. So Ron did that, huh? He's amazing. Happy birthday, Ronnie. Nice guy. Once again, the payoff pitch to McFarland hit hard. Tell you, Mike's even looking for the fastball. He can get that head out in a hurry. Yeah. He's got good power. Fine offensive player as a catcher. And tell you what, they're doing a pretty good job throwing out base runners, too. 41% of the base dealers have been thrown out by Kansas City catchers this year. So Garcia with another 3-2 pitch. Uh-oh, that's hit deep to left center. Way back. Lance at the fence. And put it on the board. That's the third homer off Garcia. And it's a 4-0 Kansas City lead. Well, McFarland certainly did see enough pitches right there. It's his seventh homer, 21 RBIs on the season. 3-2 fastball down out over the plate. But he just dropped the head of the bat on it. He see him make that good contact out front. Good swing, Lance. Made a good effort for it, but that ball is really jumping out of this place. The hot I tell air. You, it's unbelievable. That's a great hitter's yard. Kurt Stillwell takes the ball. Curtis Witch hitter hitting at 241. 0 for 2 last evening. He's 1 for 10 against the Sox this season. 
Royals now with 42 home runs on the year as that breaking ball. Blowing inside and the count 2 0. Well, he got it on top of McFarland very quickly, 0 and 2, and then tried to get make the perfect pitch. Missed. Mike waited him out. As the count goes to 3 and 0 on Stillwell. That's one thing that Garcia has been just absolutely outstanding on, getting on top of the hitters. You don't want to see him become tentative now. There's the fastball strike in the count three and one. Check some particulars for you in that Boston 13 to three victory over California. Gardner the winner, Finley the loser, Jack Clark hit another one. Number eight for Clark. High kick and it's beat foul over by the Royal dugout, so the count goes full. Baltimore over Toronto, eight to four. Jeff Ballard. The winner, Guzman the loser, Bob Melvin, Mike Devereaux, homer for the Orioles, and Joe Carter, number 11, for the Blue Jays. Three, two, base it. Well, the Kansas City Royals are, have got their hitting shoes on tonight, that's for sure. A nice job of hitting by Stillwell on the 3-2 fastball out over the plate. He went with it nicely. Well, they're just hanging out some ropes here against Ramon Garcia. As you can see, that pitch tailing away from him might have been slightly out of the zone. But with that good inside-out swing, he's able to nail it in the left field for a base hit. So that's four runs on five hits in just one inning so far against Ramon Garcia. Sammy Ellis out there. Activity now in the Sox pen. There you see Melito Perez. Well, if you look at this thing logically, Wimpy, it's tough for anybody. Roger Clemens, Chuck Finley, anybody to go out there and have four outstanding outings in a row. Ramon getting called up went out there had three outstanding outings in succession and you got to wonder when he was going to get touched up a little bit but we'll just see how he reacts to it. Hey, he was down four to nothing in the first inning of his major league debut. That's right. Came right back and battled him. But this is a little bit different type of four nothing than it was against Oakland. Yeah. He walked those other yeah. people as the runner takes off. Ozzie now. On a deflection, yes. Nice play as Garcia looking to try to catch it a little too quick. Stillwell was off. They get David Howard, and there's one gone. Well, hit and run on. You can see it's right back to Ramon. He's looking to throw to second base, and he takes his eye off the ball. But fortunately, Ozzy was in the area, able to make the play. That's the one thing they were going to get out of that anyway. They were just going to get the out at first. There's Vincent. You're right. This has been a little askew thus far. So here's the leanoff hitter, Brian McCray. Hit a rocket back to Garcia, who knocked it down and threw him out. Change and a good one. So the count one and one with Gibson on deck. Four runs, five hits for the Royals here in the top of the second inning. No runs, no hits for the Sox. Slashed foul and the count one and two.
No? Mm. Better. Keep it on the ground, kid. Yeah. Good idea. In this yard. Boy, it would behoove you, wouldn't it? Man, you just can't make a mistake. Especially, and the thing you really have to stay away from here, too, is walks because that home run turns into two and three run shots. If you do stuff like that, you got to keep, you know, they say keep the ball down, but everybody's a low, low ball hitter. There's a little duck snort into left field. Still well. They're going to wave him around his range. They get a shot. Here's the throw. Short hops Fisk. Still well scores, and it's 5 0 Kansas City with McCray in the second. That's RBI number 27 for McRae. Brian McRae. There you see a curveball, just a hanger right there, right in the middle of the plate. Timmy charges the ball, but the throw is slightly offline, and the good speed of Kurt Spillwell beats it. He would have had him had the throw run right on the mark. You see the head first slide. Stillwell in there. That's a fifth run given up by Garcia in an inning and a third, and that's going to be it. Jeff Torborg out to the mound to speak to him. Second visit of the inning, so he is history. And it looks like Melito Perez will come in in long relief. All right, a break in the action here in the top of the second inning. Five-run lead the Royals have, and we'll be back to give you the numbers on Melito Perez right after this. Ramon Garcia just goes an inning and a third tonight. Had a tough outing, gave up five runs on six hits. So he is history for the time being, but as Hawk mentioned earlier, just can't pitch great every time out there. This was his fourth outing of the season and first poor one. So Melito Perez comes out in long relief tonight. Melito three and four with a 4.06 earned run average in 12 ball games. Has no saves as of yet. Numbers are pretty good there though. 51 hits given up in almost 58 innings of work. He has walked 30 while striking out 51. So Melito on in relief. His career against the Royals. He's four and two with a 3.74 earned run average. See, he's worked 43 and a third innings and striking out 34. But since he's come to the bullpen and working out of that pen, he has been very effective and a great addition to the staff from that bullpen spot. So Kurt Gibson, who homered his first time up, will be the first batter Melito Perez faces here with one out in the second. Five runs, six hits for the Royals. Three in the first, two here in the second. Gibson hit a 3-2 change. Way back. All for Moan. And also Mike McFarland's 3-2 fastball was hit out of the yard. So Melito, who is not a happy camper, says he, throws a fastball strike. Meanwhile, since he has been unhappy being relegated to the bullpen, he has done an outstanding job. 0 0.079 earned run average. One earned run in 11 innings as a reliever. That's real good. That's very good. Yeah. That fastball out of play. And we had some good news last night from the farm system. Yeah, that Sammy Ellis and Jeff Torborg, Ron Schuler, all were speaking very highly of. Johnny Ruffin pitched a no hitter for Sarasota. Ruffin, just 19 years old, was selected in the fourth round of the June 88 free agent draft. He's a graduate of Choctaw County High School in Butler, Alabama. So, our congratulations to Johnny. That pitch just off the plate, and the count one and two. That was the one guy that they were really talking up all spring long. Yeah, they're real fond of him. I was talking to Danny Evans prior to the game today with Susie of course and there he was just raving about him. You mean the Edwards. Yes the Edwards okay. plan. <laughs> Ball and two strikes to Gibson. Where was it. Called it high but it no mm. wrong. Two and two. OK so you be an umpire right here. And that mm. ball is no higher than belt high as it crosses the plate. Look. A good splitter. Yeah. Fooled the whole plate umpire Larry Barnett. 
Bottom fell out of it. 2-2. Two -two. Fastball. Ruffin, who was recommended and signed by Rick Patterson. 6'3", 172 pounds, tall, lanky. Got outstanding movement. Good movement. Yeah, they expect him to be a good one. And that's nice to hear. You can never get too much good pitching. Oh, man. McCray at second. Just got a piece of it. In and out of Carlton's glove. Minnesota still leading Cleveland 7 to 5. Indians led that game 5 to 1 at one point. Twins came up with six runs in the fourth. Milwaukee still leading Oakland 6 to 3. Bottom of the seventh at County Stadium. Brewers hitting. No score. New York at Texas. That's in the top of the first inning. Gibson hanging tough. It's amazing, isn't it? Like Minnesota is in that great streak right now. And they're down five to one. I bet you they didn't even think twice that they were going to lose that ball game. It's the way it gets. Yeah. Well, when you get that, I recall, you know, Wimpy, you were here, 83. I think the club won 27 games that year in the eighth and ninth innings. Mm hmm Yeah. It's and just a feeling. That's right. You just get the feeling you're going to win, and usually do. There's ball three. I can remember at one point we, w we had won 17 in a row at home. And just when you lose on the 18th game, you think, how in the heck did that happen? Yeah. You're amazed. You're not down. You're just surprised. So a 3-2 count with one out to Gibson. First walk issued by Sox pitching, and that'll bring up George Brett. George had a single in the first inning and scored. Check some National League finals for you. A couple of those. The Giants shut out the Pirates at Candlestick four to nothing. San Diego beat the Cubs six to two out of Jack Murphy Stadium. Later on, St. Louis will take on the Dodgers in L.A. Cincinnati leading Philadelphia three to one. That's in the top of the seventh of Veterans Stadium. Mets four to nothing over Houston. Bottom of the sixth at Shea. Montreal shutting out Atlanta one zip. That's in the bottom of the fourth up at Olympic Stadium in Canada. Right side. Matt, he'll go to second base as Ozzie now goes to third. Yes. What an instinctive play by Ozzie Guillen for the double play, and that'll get the Sox out of further damage. Royals a couple of runs, three hits, no errors, one left. And after an inning and a half, Kansas City leads it five to nothing. Great play, Oz. That's the story, bottom of the second inning. Sox a long way to go. Brilliant play by Ozzie Guillen to end the top half of this frame. There's Matt Marullo going to Ozzie with Kirk Gibson coming down. Now Brian McRae rounding third base. Ozzie went immediately there. It's a super play right there, Hawk. You can see Brian, he's a good base runner, and he really wasn't that far off, but Ozzie got rid of it so quickly. And Marullo, you get, give credit to him too. He made that nice spin move, that counterclockwise move. Made the throw to second base. That was kind of gutsy right there. Got Gibson by just a narrow margin, and Ozzy finished it off at third. That was a big play. Matt takes a strike in the count 0 2. Here's Ozzy. Well, it could have been a lot worse. Five runs, it appears, isn't a whole lot here. No. Though. No, not in this ballpark. I'll tell you, this is like. Playing a 500 yard par five downwind <laughs> on a 100 yard <laughs> wide fairway. That's popped up left side. Sites are now backing up, makes a catch, and there's one gone. Well, Boddicker has shown us that he's willing to throw that fastball inside on these White Sox hitters. He jammed Tim Raines to start things off, and he got in there deep against Matt Marullo. So Boddicker, he will throw that slow curveball a lot, but when he throws the fastball, he will spot it inside effectively. We've seen him do that in the past. And, of course, we've seen the best way to pitch some of these ox hitters who are diving out over the plate is to come inside. 
One out, and here's Carlton Fisk. So a lot of time left to put some points on the board. Sox got Bartica for six runs and five and a third at Royal Stadium. Takes a fastball strike. Bodiker has that, for the most part, almost sixth sense that he knows when you're looking for the hook. He watches the reaction of the hitter as well. The fastball jams him, pops him up right side. David Howard now calling Eisenreich off and two quick uh, out. That's the third jam shot and five outs so far. In his last start, he lost against the White Sox. He is victimized, though, by some kind of bad defensive play. Five and a third innings, gave up six hits. Six runs, three of which were earned. Three walks and a strikeout. Walks didn't help him that day, that's for sure. Danny Pasqua takes a fastball on the inside corner. Danny six for 17 against Kansas City pitching as there's that overhand slow curveball and the count one and one. Another one back doors in Pasqua didn't like the call. At all. One two. Not a fifty nine and a half footer. So two balls two strikes two out five runs six hits no errors for Kansas City no runs and no hits for the Sox. Fastball just a bit tardy which is understandable. Bodiker's going to throw about 80, 81, somewhere along in that range. But after he shows you all the change-ups and the slow curveballs, all of a sudden to the eye of the hitter, he's going to jump that up to about 85, 86. Slow curveball. Whoa. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that curveball is, what, about 50? I, I, would, I would even say it appeared even be faster than that, the way our guys are reacting to that fastball. And there's curveball right there. That's a do-drop inner. Fastball inside, so he walks in. First Sox base runner. There you go. Wow. Silver and black pack. For only 15 bucks, you can do that. <laughs> Here's one dog, Lance Johnson. Their makeup man needs to kind of straighten them out a little bit. Lance hitting at 248. 5 for 17 against Kansas City. Sights are in on the grass at third. Fastball strike. Looks like he wants another fastball. Inside. Right there. And he gets it. You know, Boddicker's a lot like Burt Blylevin. Walk in the respect that you, you go up there looking for your, his breaking ball, the good one you're not going to hit anyway. But he's always going to give you a fastball to hit in and at bat. He's generally speaking, he's not going to throw three over the plate and one at bat. I happen to think that Mike Boddicker is one of the more cerebral, one of the smartest pitchers in the game of baseball. Again, he has good instincts, and he allows those instincts to work for him. You just can't look at the catcher. You've got to notice what that hitter is doing as well when he's diving out over the plate, when he's pulling off a pitch. Slow curveball. That's to the shortstop Stillwell, who steps on the base, forces pass, when that'll retire the side. Nothing across. There were no hits. No errors. One man left. After two, five, zip, KC. It's been Kevin Seitzer. Tartable, one for one, a two-run homer. Takes a fastball in the inside corner. He took a Ramon Garcia fastball out of here way back into right center field. Tartable, very, very powerful. Outfield bunch, for the most part, straight up. Out in front on the splitter and count 0 and 2. And a reminder, you can enter the Southwest Airlines White Sox Home Run Derby. You just might win a trip from Chicago to Kansas City. 
to see the Sox and these Royals, plus a super sweet party for 20 of your friends at New Comiskey Park. It's all part of Southwest Airlines' 20th anniversary celebration. A pie. Find out how you can win later in tonight's ball game. One and two the count to Danny Tartable. He's gone. He'll grab some bench on a good splitter from Molito. Well, Melito Perez has had great stuff coming out of the bullpen. As you can see right here, that splitter just nosedives right as it gets to home plate. Danny Tartable was thinking belt high fastball. All of a sudden, it became a great split finger pitch around the knees. So he's a strikeout victim. First for Melito tonight. There's Jim Eisenreich. Fastball off the plate. He bounced out to Ventura's first trip. Low 2 0. Check some particulars in the National League Finals. Padres over the Cubs 6 2. 6 11 0 for San Diego, 2 8 1 for the Cubs. The winner, Rasmussen. Loser, Bilecki. Fastball foul back. Home runs in that ball game. George Bell, number 13. And for San Diego, Howard. That was his first Major League homer. Two run shot off Lancaster in the sixth inning. Mike Remlinger. Shut out Pittsburgh as a pitch up high in the count three and one. Four to nothing on a three hitter. Smiley the loser. One home run in that ball game. Matt Williams, who's starting to get cranked up a little bit. That was his ninth off Smiley in the third. Ventura is going to make it two in a row over Eisenreich. Yankees scored a pair in the top of the first inning down at Arlington. Two out and here's Seitzer. He bounced out to Joey Cora. Slashes it foul. Oakland has scored a run in the top of the eighth inning, still hitting. Trailing the Brewers six to four. Minnesota stretching out that lead over Cleveland nine to five. Twins going for 14. <laughs> Jeez. One strike pitch. Fastball a little high and the count evens at one. It's going to be interesting to see how well. Minnesota plays after they lose that first ball game. Of course, it took the Texas Rangers a long time to regroup from that first loss. They lost eight in a row and 11 out of 12 before they started winning again. Off the end of the bat, Lance Johnson in center field. So Molito is going to have himself an easy one, two, three inning. Nothing across after two and a half, five, nothing KC. Docs have some work to do trailing Mike Boniker 5 0. It'll be Cora, Ozzy, then the top of the order, Tim Raines. Joey hitting at 288. There's a little duck snort. It's going to fall for a base hit. Yes. Thank you very much. So as Cora reaches first base right now, let's pause for our station identification. This is WGN TV Chicago, America's number one sports station. Along with Wimpy, Tom Pachorik, this is a Hawk Ken Harrelson from beautiful Comiskey Park. Packed house tonight. Sellout crowd as the Sox take on Kansas City in game two of this three game series. Sox, as a matter of fact, have played Royals four times and they have won all four games. So this first Sox hit, and here comes Oz. Oz hitting at 262. One for four last evening. He is five for 16 against KC this year. Whoa. I'll tell you what it looks like, Hawk. It looks like Mike Boddicker has made up his mind that he's going to throw inside to all the Sox hitters, regardless of who it is. Joey Cora just fought that ball off and got himself a base hit, a little duck snort out there, but he's going to pitch inside with the heater. Oh, yeah, he's got to. That pitch foul out of play. I'll tell you, Mike is exactly, he does, when you watch Boddicker, when he is, when he's right. It's just like we were talking about Ramon. You know, he had three outstanding starts in a row. 
So he was due for a bad one. But when he has a good one, when that fellow right there has a good one, he'll give you a clinic. He will make that fastball. He'll jump it up six or seven miles an hour. He'll add another almost a foot on his fastball just the way he goes about working the hitters. Well, you faced him, Whippy. You know exactly oh, yeah. what I'm talking about. Hated it. Yeah. Turns that one over, misses low and away, and the count one and one. Well, Boddicker has had some of his biggest successes against the Sox. I mean, he's 10 and 6 lifetime, but had a lot of strikeouts. And here's the guys we it really couldn't block your eye if he hit you right underneath it with his fastball. Well, his best ball game maybe he ever pitched was the American League Championship Series. There's a shot. Foul. Uh, Will Purdue foot. Boy, he nailed that one. Best game, he, but uh, getting back to that, the best game he ever pitched in his career probably was, was in the ALCS in '83, when he struck out 14 White Sox hitters and won the game four nothing on a shutout performance. And he was just devastating that night, going inside with the fastball and making perfect use of his curve. Well, he he will take on certain nights. Boddicker will take his second best pitch, which is his fastball, and turn it into his out pitch. Now, when you can do that. You're a pitcher. He sets up everything with the curveball. Slow curveball there, beat foul. But that is secret to pitching. He usually pitches inside, and Mike very seldom misses out over the plate when he wants to get the fastball in. Yeah, he knows that when he throws his fastball and he lets those big hitters let them get their arms extended, he can get hurt by it. Short lead by Cora. This should be a pair. Rack them up. 6 3 double play. 50th twin killing of the season turned by the Royals. Well, we talk so much about controlling the speed of the bat from the hitter, and Bonnecker does it extremely well. He controls the hitter's bat speed, changing speeds, throwing strikes. He gets the hitters out over that front hip, and once you do that, you got him. Then you got to push the bat. You can't pull it. So here's Reigns bounced down to Seitzer his first trip. Takes it low. And he has great command of that. Going back to that one game in 83 that I was just talking about, the ALC. The ALCS. He, he didn't walk anybody. Little nothing fastball right there. He throws it. He's not afraid to throw the ball on the inside part of the plate to certain hitters and just let them hit it as hard as they want to because he knows it's going foul. So he just grabs a quick, quick strike on you. There's a bunt. High chopper. McFarland, wow, you have to eat it. Once it hit the ground, you got to stick it in your pocket. Tim Raines has some of the great acceleration. In the world, really, not just on a baseball field. As you can see, he tries the drag bunt right there. The ball hits on top of home plate. And if Mike McFarland's able to get it on that hop, as Hawk said, he would have thrown him out. But when that hit the ground, forget it. You got to stick it in your pocket. Timmy putting that wrist guard on. And I was wrong, Hawk. He did walk three guys when he struck out 14. I was looking at the World Series oh, that he picked. Wimpy, don't do that. Don't be wrong anymore. I promise it'll never happen again. Okay. All right. Slow curveball had Robin out in front. Want to know the count? Boy, he starts it off as Wimpy talks about so often about these pitchers who have the good curveballs, and then they pitch up high with a fastball. They start them off at the same spot. Fastball, Robin, a little tardy right there, and the count one and one. That's one of the keys: starting it off at the same to the eye of the hitter, the same coming out of the same spot. Fastball up curveball up and all of a sudden here comes a curveball <laughs> and you can't get on top of the fastball. That's right. That's what makes that Gerald Alexander effective for the Texas Rangers. A change up hit high into left field. Kirk Gibson makes a catch and it'll retire to the side. Nothing across a couple of hits. No errors. One man left after three. Sox in trouble. They trail it five zip. Top of the fourth inning, five nothing Kansas City. It'll be McFarland, Stillwell, and Howard, the lower third of the Royal Order, 
Well, we have a moment here. Want to send out a big White Sox? Yes, to Lauren Weaver. Beautiful little thing at Evergreen Park. Just a big White Sox fan. Watches all the games. Here's McFarland, one for one. Took a 3 2 fastball from Ramon Garcia. Way out of here, his first trip. McFarland now with seven homers, 21 RBIs on the season. That's his second home run against the Sox this year. 0 1 pitch, fastball inside. You can see McFarland has a very unusual hitting style. When he gets ready to hit, he gets that front arm completely straight and back as far as he can possibly go. Kind of works for him though. Keeps it closed for a long period of time. There you see him pigeon toed and watch. He gets ready. That left arm is straight. Hits Oops. him. In that left arm. Let's see very few guys do that. Usually that, that front arm is bent throughout the entire swing. Fastball. He just can't get out of the way right here. Just lifts his arms up a bit in his cocking motion, and he gets it just above the elbow. It didn't look like it appeared to hurt too much, so leadoff man on once again for Kansas City in the fourth inning. That's an orthodox, but he gets it done. Yeah. He got a chance to be a good hitter. We've always liked him. Here's Stillwell. Had a single and scored a run in the second. Can't get it, and the count nothing in one. Top of the ninth inning now at County Stadium. Oakland hitting, trailing the Brewers, six to four. Top of the sixth inning at Cleveland Stadium, Minnesota nine, the Tribe six. Farland just a short lead. Up high, one and one to count. Stay in between innings. Can't get up there quick enough to get those ribs from the Bertucci boys. <laughs> by Bruno sending them up here. They're the best. Oh, yeah. They are just outstanding. They get better all the time. Well, my pants just won't let me wear, uh, eat those anymore. And I'm glad we got that cam wrap night out yeah. of the way oh, last me evening. Too. I told you. You don't watch out. Cecil's going. He's going to catch you. Wait a minute. I'm going to catch Cecil. <laughs> no, he's going to catch you. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not leading the league it. in RBIs either. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't eat as much as I want. That's cued on the splitter, Robin. He'll go to second base. Cork, and they turn it. Yes. Five, four, three. Rack him up. And that was a tough one right there. Second double play for the Sox tonight. Little number off the end of the bat. And Robin gets it there quickly to Joey Cora, who turns it nicely. Kurt Stillwell had a tough time getting out of the batter's box right there. He usually runs pretty good, had a tough time getting out. So the Sox were able to turn two. So David Howard will hit with two out. David over one tonight. Bounced out one to six to three. Uh, three. Hit it off the glove of Ramon Garcia. Caromed right over to Ozzy. So the youngster, the rookie out of Sarasota, Florida. Son of former White Sox right-hander Bruce Howard. Switch hitter. One and one to count. Looks like he's about 15, 16 years old, doesn't he? He sure does. Young face. Yeah. Alfield swung well around to the left. Ventura even with a bag at third. High gas. David, you got to lay off that pitch. I know your dad's told you so. Yeah. Well, Bruce Howard was an outstanding, outstanding prospect for the White Sox. Yeah, you Fishing talk about him a lot. Yeah. yeah. Of course, he was the one that 
White Sox had to make a determination in the trade if they were going to keep Denny McLean or Howard, and they kept Bruce Howard. Wow. Molina wanted it, didn't get it, and the count two and two. That's how a good looking prospect yeah. he was. Whew. Hurt his shoulder and unfortunately ruined his career. Here's a 2 2 pitch. Upstairs, full count. And a reminder that USA Today All Star balloting continues. Just pick up a ballot. And vote for your favorite White Sox players. Well, I'll tell you what, Big Frank went in about seventh in that thing. Isn't that terrible? Foul tipped into the glove and held on by Carlton Fisk. So Molito picks up his second strikeout, nothing across after three and a half, five nothing Royals. Big Frank Thomas leads off the bottom of the fourth inning, Sox. Got to put some runners on the bases out there. They trail it five nothing. Thomas, a strikeout victim, his first trip. Takes a slow curveball. Yeah, Boddicker got Big Frank to chase a high fastball out of the zone back in the first inning. No. Just off the plate in the count. 2 0. Oh. Let me show you that home run that he hit last evening earlier. That fastball will be out of play right side. It's been a long time since I've seen a, a ball go off the bat straight up like that and carry that far. That is amazing. Killebrew used to hit them like that. I've seen Daryl Strawberry do that too. Yeah, Strawberry hits them like that. No. Inside, what's new? Three and one. Big Frank leading the league and walks with 52. They see his second in RBIs behind Wimpy's friend Cecil. <laughs> That's uh -oh. deep. Get out. Way here. back in the center field. McCray looks up. You can put it on the board. Yeah. Number 10 for Frank Thomas, and it's a 5 1 game. Frank now at 48 RBIs on the season. 3-1 fastball coming up. Do not disturb. Middle half of the plate right there, right down the middle and knee high. And Frank just drops the head of the bat and lets it rattle around up there in center field. Off that seeing eye that, oh my. Matt Marullo takes a curveball off the plate. And that popped up to Seitzer his first trip. There's that little Fosh pitch, nothing, fastball, pops him up. That's all he wants to do, just get the hitter out there on that front foot over that lead hip. Well, we talked about Big Frank being, I believe, seventh in the balloting. And that is not including tonight with home run number 10. Obviously, if there's a White Sox player deserves to be on that all-star team at this juncture, it is Big Frank. Oh, yeah, he'll be on it. There's no doubt about it, but you got to start voting for him. Here's Carlton. Fastball. Fouls it straight back. Yeah, there's really no reason for Frank Thomas not to close that gap, too, in the voting when we're drawing such great crowds I know here, it. and our fans should all be voting for him. He deserves it. Well... Of course, that's always been a little bit of a sore subject with me. Slow curveball, drops it nicely in and over. And the count 0-2. I mean, you can suggest it maybe or insinuate it, but it's hard to tell somebody how to vote. <laughs> yeah. I don't want anybody telling me how to vote, and I don't want to tell anybody else how to vote. Oh, yeah, well, vote for Big Frank. <laughs> oh, my. Drops down with the sidearm breaking ball, so Fisk is gone. Second strikeout. 
And here comes Dan Pasqua. Danny has drawn the only walk issued by Boddicker thus far. 5 6 and 0 oh for KC, 1 3 and 0 oh for the Sox. Curveball low and inside. The final now from County Stadium in Milwaukee. Brewers beat the A's 6 to 4. Yes. Off the plate and the count 2 0. Oh. Get these bats cranked up a little bit. Got plenty of time to come back in this game, in this ballpark. Hammers this one foul down by Barry Foote. You know, it used to be that was the same thing we would always say, like at Fenway. You know, you get five or six runs down in a hurry. No problem. You know, in this ballpark. Well, you can certainly include this park now in that same scenario. Oh, as there's yeah. a slow curveball dropped over and the count two and two. Yeah, you know, you can get a lot of hits here. The infield is fairly fast and the, the large outfielder. So there's a whole lot of area to cover for those outfielders. You can bloop them in. A lot of ways to get hits here. And he fouls the slow curveball out of play. And it has shown to be one of the better home run hitting parks. As you can see by the way Big Frank's been swinging the bat. And of course the Royals swinging it of course tonight. Hard. I wonder Will Perdue's here ever since he Big Frank wanted him to touch his bat for good luck last night four for five. Danny fighting that inside fastball off. So the count hangs at two and two. Tried to get into chase after that one. That's what you call a tantalizing hook. So the payoff pitch got him on the change. And that'll do it. But the Sox get on the board. Big Frank's 10th homer, 48th RBI. And after four, it's 5 1 Royals. To the top of the order for the Royals here in the fifth inning. McCray, Gibson, and George Brett. And a reminder the Cleveland Indians come to. New Comiskey Park for a two game series Tuesday and Wednesday, June 18th and 19th. Great seats are still available, so just visit your nearest Ticketmaster outlet or call 312 831 1 Sox. Ball hit hard into the gap in right center field. Pasqua can't get it. Lance can't get it. McCray, that good speed. I mean, he's just now. <laughs> As he stops, he was going to third base in the Sox with an excellent replay. He was flying all of a sudden he stutter stepped it started to go and went back. That hurt just watching him try and stop right there. I'll tell you Sox had a good chance of getting him first pitch fastball. He nails it in that gap in right center field. Well he made good contact out in front of home plate. You can see one hops to the fence. Lance got there in a hurry. And the good relay throw by Joey Cora as you can see. McRae thinking about going. And just stopped dead in his tracks. I think he was a bit lucky that he did because he may have been thrown out at third base. You never want to make the first or the third out of an inning at third base. No, he would have definitely been a gone goose over there as McCray with his sixth double. And here's Gibson. Gibson has homered and he has walked. And that's the first hit given up by Melito Perez since coming on back in the second inning. Gibson takes the ball and the count one and zero. Oh. So three finals in the American League: Boston hurt California 13 to three at Fenway. Orioles over the Blue Jays eight to four at Sky Dome. Milwaukee over Oakland six four at County Stadium. Broken bat, Looper, Cora, one gone. Well, he just ate him up. Yeah, he did. Gibson definitely trying to pull in that situation. Couldn't advance the runner to third base. So George Brett has to drive him in with a single here or with a base hit. Just three finals now in the National League. Giants shut out Pittsburgh four to nothing. Padres over the Cubs six two. 
Mets shut out Houston six to nothing at Shea. So here's Dennis Menace. He has singles, scored, and he's hit into a double play. Alfield bunched around slightly to the left. As there's a good splitter, and the count nothing in one. George out of Rancho Mirage, California. Beats this one foul. George in the offseason just loves to play golf. That's a pretty good place to be playing, too. You get, of course, you get that tougher than I mean, tougher than nickel steak Gene Mock out there to beat. Oh. He will he will take your money. He's got plenty of mine, I'll tell you that. No kidding. The 0-2 pitch beats this one foul. Well, how does George play? George is a good hitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. George. Great hitter if you want to carry that another. He's got step, over 2,700. George is a good hitter. <laughs> <laughs> he has fun, I'll tell you. Yeah. I mean, he gets on that golf course, gets that chew going. And those shorts, he plays left-handed. He'll with that high slice out there. Uh-huh. He go find it and hit it again. Oh my! George said, "Wait a minute!" As an explosion goes off, out beyond, outside the ballpark in center field, he hope nothing went wrong. That was a good one. So Melito with an 0-2 count. That's off his foot. <laughs> oh, man. That doesn't feel good right there. Look at this. KC career rankings, first in runs, hits at 2,740, doubles, certainly got to lead in that. Home runs, almost 300 in a huge hitter's ballpark. Definitely not a home run park. And, of course, RBIs and... 311 career batting average. I'll tell you, you know, with the way baseball is today and the free agency, those things are liable to stand forever. Those records that George has. Yeah. Wow. As he's going, watch out, Pudge. Oh, man. Don't do that. Wow. Got him on the elbow. Mercy. Oh boy, it hit the umpire too after it came off of Pudge's elbow. Mark Anderson out there. Let's take a look at it. What a good tailing action right there on that pitch. And you can see George was fooled by it. He let go that time with his bottom hand. Usually you'll see George Brett swing. Watch this. His top hand stayed on the bat. And he tried to hang on right there. He just couldn't. And the ball got Pudge in the elbow. Hopefully he's all right. Pitch right there. Just nosedive right there at the last. And George swung over the top of it. Well, we talk about it so often only because... It happens so often that Pudge is either nailed with a foul tip, gets it with a bat, and he's going to get a lot more than the average catcher because he is just so huge. God, you see Larry Barnett commiserating with him. We've got him in the hand. So thank goodness he is okay. The last thing we'd need. So two out, and here's Tarnable. Danny smoked a two-run homer in the first inning, and he struck out in the third. McCray at second with that leadoff double. One and oh the count. Yeah, but with the movement of players the way it is, and you get a guy who's been as long with one organization as George has, 
all those standards which are are very high for any club they're liable to stand maybe not forever but for an awful long time oh, sure yeah that's on the outside corner of beauty a little slider there by Molito on the count of evens at one well you think back of how many guys how many great even the great players have stayed on just one team throughout their entire yeah. major league careers very few George is one Robin Yount's another name that comes out But outside of those two guys, it's tough to find anyone that'll spend more than like 10 years with a club. Charlie Huff, of course, spent 10 and a half years with Texas before coming over to the Sox. But he also spent a lot of time with the Dodgers. Ball, two strikes, two out. He's gone. Danny will grab some bench and that'll retire the side. So the leadoff double by Brian McCray goes for no. Nothing across one hit. No errors, one man left after four and a half. Five one Kansas City. This is presented by authority of the Chicago White Sox and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without the expressed written consent of the Chicago White Sox. And as we go to the bottom half of the fifth inning, there you see it. The Royals, five runs, seven hits, and no errors. The White Sox. One run, three hits, and no errors against Mike Boddicker. Ramon Garcia went an inning and a third tonight. He gave up all five Kansas City runs on six hits. And now it's Melito Perez's turn. Lance Johnson hits the first curveball to shortstop. Still well has it, throws him out. One pitch, one out. Another illustration right there on that slow curveball from Mike Boddicker. He wants to get the guy out on that front hip, out on that front foot, over the front hip. And he gives it to you so big that you can see it that you still think that you can do something with it as a hitter. And he, Boddicker, is like one of those martial arts guys. He allows you to use your own energy against yourself. Oh, yeah, because Lance Johnson just started from a dead bat position right there and just moved straight forward. Couldn't supply any power on that pitch. Now to bring up Joey Cora. Joey singled. That was back in the third inning. He was erased on a double play ground ball by Ozzy Guillen. Joey from Caguas, Puerto Rico. There's a Fosh ball. Mike Boddicker wants to know where is it. Larry Barnett says it's low, so it's a 2-0 count on Joey Cora. In that Milwaukee 6-4 victory over Oakland, Jamie Navarro the winner, Dave Stewart the loser. Greg Vaughn went deep a couple of times off Stewart, numbers 10 and 11. Ricky Anderson had four stolen bases. He now has 25 on the season, and Dan Plesak picked up the save. Oh, Plesak's been scuffling all oh, year. That's only what we've got here, second save. Second save, my goodness. He was one of the best. Had some arm trouble. There's a fastball, catches the inside corner. Two and two now on Joey Cora, who's batting at even 300 as he stands in there. You see Joey. 389 in 18 at bats, right handed, and left handed, he's a 262 hitter. Curveball misses. Full count, Joey saying. <laughs> yeah, that hit me, man. <laughs> Barnett said, no, no, no. Joey, get back in there and swing the bat, son. If you're going to get hit, that's the way to get it. <laughs> Maybe in the behind with a curveball. So 3-2 pitch coming up. Should be a fastball. It is, and it misses the inside corner. So Joey Cora gets on base once again. And that is the second walk issued by Mike Boddicker tonight. He wanted that pitch. That just missed the inside corner. A little bit too to close to take right there. Good eye right here by Cora. i tell you, Boddicker, with his tenure in the league and his control umpires usually give him the benefit of the doubt yeah Ozzy's first pitch fastball finds that hole between first and second Cora will have to hold at second because Danny Tartable was on that ball in a hurry he's playing shallow for Ozzy again so Ozzy jumped on the first pitch fastball just picked it right off the ground and found that hole between first and second well, we talked about it last evening outside of Sammy Sosa and Mark Witten. As you see a nice piece of hitting right there by Ozzie, just going down and hitting the pitch. 
Outside of Sosa and Mark Witten of Toronto. And that guy right there, Danny Tartable, will throw you out about as quick as anybody. Yeah, he got that ball in a hurry. Charges the ball very well, as you can see in that instance right there. And that walk set up that hit for Ozzy because Eisenreich would have been playing back, had a better chance to field it. So that'll bring up Tim Raines. Timmy one for two. Takes the curveball on the outside corner. Strike one. So good speed on a base pass. Sox trying to make something happen here in the fifth inning, trailing by four. There you see Reigns, a 299 hitter as he stands in there. Oh, curveball in the dirt. Gets by McFarlane. The runners will advance a base. And two in scoring position now. Let's just hope this is a big break for the Sox right here. As Mike could not block that big slow curveball. He may have been blocked out a little bit by the legs of Tim Raines. That one was way inside. Almost hit Timmy. So two runners in scoring position. Here's Raines infield back. Fastball. He tried to pull it. Had a little sinking action on that pitch. And Timmy now down in the count one and two. Yeah, that's just that little nothing fastball he throws out there. To... <laughs> goes out there walking towards Ozzy, he says something. Ozzy jumps straight up. Thought he might get picked off. He has been picked off before. That's how he. Well, Timmy's got a battle right here and fight it. Just put the ball in play. There's a slow curve ball. Pulled right side. Eisenreich will make the play unassisted, but the runners do advance. So the wild pitch costs Mike Boddicker there as Joey Cora scores at the 5 2 ball game. Ozzie in the third. And for Tim Raines, RBI number 22 on the season. He's tied with a cast of, cast of many for second place in RBIs behind Big Frank. Well, that slow curveball, you just can't wait long enough for it. That'll bring up Robin Ventura. Robin 0 for 2 on the night. Runner at third base takes the fastball up and away. Robin hitting 271. As he stands in there, has a one ball, no strike count. Ooh, he got jammed severely right there. Left side. Shortstop Stillwell calls him off and plays the wind. And the side is retired, but not before the Sox pick up one run on, on just one base hit. They leave a runner, and after five, it's Kansas City five and the Sox two. Trading advertiser of White Sox baseball is Midway Dodge. Where's Advantage Dodge? Top of the sixth inning here at Comiskey Park. Sox have cut into that deficit. It's five to two right now. Melito Perez has given up just one hit in relief of Ramon Garcia. Jim Eisenreich to lead things off for Kansas City. First ball hitting, lines it. Fair ball. It hit the line. And the ball girl on the right field line, not aware, thought it was a foul ball. So it will be a ground rule double for Eisenreich. Double number 12 for Jim. So once again, the leadoff man. Is at second base with a double. Second inning in a row. That's happened. Well, he's going to get a double anyway. There's a splitter. Just hangs up there for him. So this really turns out to be, you don't want to say it, but turns out to be a little bit of a break right there for the Sox because if the ball takes a bad hop at all, he's liable to wind up on third. Yeah, Eisenreich has great speed, too. So. Oh, she's embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed, honey. Just help the club. Don't let it happen Honest again, mistake. of course. Yeah. Here's Seitzer. He's going to try and move him over to third base. He's great at that particular area of the game. Yeah, he is when that hand's all right, but you see that right hand right there. He's got a cast on it. Yeah, he's scuffling right now. Batting average down to 194, and Kevin came into this season a 297 career hitter. He's only 29 years old. Lives now in Overland Park, Kansas. Fastball. It's just over the Kansas City dugout. And look out. Kevin said he just has no strength in it. Can't. Now, I know, you know, you broke yours, I broke mine. Like twice, and it takes a while to get strength back in it. Now, which bone did he break in his hand? Uh, 
Right across the... Oh, yeah, okay, the same Right one. above the knuckles, right across the palm. And that was me, too. That's called a fighter's break, isn't it? What they call that? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Melito coming inside right there. So sights are ahead in the count, two and one. Now, it's going to take him about a year before he has full strength in that hand. And, of course, you're playing with that little cast. That just doesn't get it. Well, you get jammed now, and you will feel it in that top hand. Two and one pitch coming up. Fastball. It's a foul right side. You know, Carlton Fisk, when he uh, he had trouble with his left, no, his right hand. That's right. And talking to Pudge about about that, he was glad that it was his right hand instead of his left because sitting that your power comes from from the your underhand. That is not from your top hand when you're hitting. It is up the middle. Melito deflects it to Joey Cora, who bare hands and throws him out. Good play by Joey. That ball was not going to skip, skip through the infield. Joey had to bare hand it, though, and Seitzer getting down the line quickly is thrown out, but the runner does advance to third. That's where I disagree with you, Wimpy. Power comes if you're a right-hand hitter from your right hand. The extension through the ball. Really? I don't think I uh, no. there's joy as you see right there. So Seitzer does get the job done. Now you lead with a left but you hit it with a right. Now the Sox no. with the infield in. We'll have to save that for another time. Meanwhile we got to stave <laughs> off this rally. <laughs> Seitzer does the job. Mike McFarland who has home and been hit by a pitch tonight. He's been perfect. The hitter with the infield in. Good splitter right there. He, over the top. Kansas City now with eight hits on the night. Two against Melito Perez, both of them being doubles. Eisenreich at third. The Sox want to cut this runner off at home. Cut him off at the pass right here. You don't want Boddicker to go out there for the sixth inning with a four-run lead. Pitch. He's going to bunt. Did he go? No, says Larry Barnett. They yeah, did. Oh, he did say go. Yeah. Okay. Thought he said, uh-uh. So two strikes now on McFarland, so he's in a hole. And Melito needs to make a pitch right here. Strike him out, pop him up. Don't hang him one. The situation's right here. You got the infield in. You do not want to make a mistake with an off-speed pitch. Fastball way outside, just wasting that one. So the count goes to one and two. Mike McFarland, born in Stockton, California. The old California League still resides there in a great pitcher's ballpark. There yes. you got him. Oh, the splitter is nasty. I don't know what Mike could be arguing with the umpire about. Fifth strikeout for Melito. And after he. Now there's a good sequence right there by Fisk. He threw in the 0 2 fastball outside, about six or eight inches. And then he comes back with that splitter outside again after he's just seen the fastball. Coming in on the same plane, and That's one right. of them just drops That's out of right. sight. Good sequence by the veteran, the commander. Now he's still got to get Kurt Stillwell here. Stillwell is one for two, hitting 244 as he stands in there. Yeah, this might be one of the big plays in this ballgame right here, this hitter. If Stillwell can pick up Eisenreich, make it a 6-2 game, it just blows the momentum back. Whereas if he can, Melito can get rid of him. Sox got a little thing going for him right now, just trailing 5-2. Rounded right side, a good play Take by Marillo. Oh, he flips to Melito and he gets him. Not too experienced over there, Matt Marullo, but he does make the play. And Kansas City comes up empty here in the sixth inning. We've completed five and a half. It's still five to two Royals. See it, five two Royals as we go to the bottom half of the sixth inning here at Comiskey Park. It'll be Frank Thomas, Matt Marullo, and Carlton Fisk, the first three hitters to face Mike Boddicker here in the sixth inning. 
Frank had that tremendous home run his last time up. Takes a fastball right there. One for two tonight. Frank with his 10th homer. 48th RBI on the season. He trails just big Cecil Fielder in the RBI category so far this season. And he has not had as many opportunities as the other big guys in the league. Oh, there's a slow, slow hook. Frank way out in front of it. And Boddicker out in front, 0-2 this time. It's amazing how important the count is. Frank had an 0-2 count his first time up, struck out on a high fastball. That's Three right. One. Second time, boom, gone, homer. When you're 0-2 to Boddicker, now all of a sudden he can get that fastball up on top of that strike zone. And because you're trying to defend, your strike zone just enlarges in your own mind. You can't cover all that area. He drops down once again. Frank takes it. That was the curveball. If he drops down again, it's not going to be a breaking ball. It's going to be a fastball up or, ex or outside corner or a missing outside. Yeah, one of the he'll two. Wanna, certainly want to hit the outside corner. There's a fastball up and in. So Frank works the count. Even now, 3-2. And what will he throw? With Boddicker, you just don't know. That's right. He's got, he's got the, the good change. He's also got that little nothing fastball he'll throw. He's got the curveball. He's got a little bitty slurve. And he'll throw him anytime, anywhere. He'll probably throw him a breaking ball right here. Drops down, curveball, got him. Well, a reminder, you can bring six candy wrappers from Leaf Candy Brands to Window 1 at Comiskey Park or any Chicagoland Ticketmaster at least 24 hours before the game and trade them for an upper deck reserve ticket to all White Sox home games in July. That's a good deal. Leaf Candy Brands include some good ones. Milk Duds, Jolly Rancher Candies, Payday, Heath Bars, one of my favorite, and Rain Blow Gum. And Matt Marillo takes ball one. So the big guy, Big Frank from Columbus, Georgia, and Auburn University is one for three in this ball game. Boddicker just aced him with that one. Upstairs, Matt ahead in the count now, 2-0. Oh, he took something off. He just threw the Fosh up there. Nothing fastball, and he got Marulo out front. Weak ground ball to second. Two down. Changing speeds and throwing strikes. That is the name of the game in pitching. And to the degree of your proficiency is to the degree of your artistry. And when he's right, he is indeed an artist. Well, you cannot throw any harder. I'll tell you what. Young guys in college and high school, there are so many guys who have better fastballs than Boddicker. Watching him pitch is a learning experience. Yeah, he's almost effortless, especially on the curveball. He takes really nothing out of his arm to throw that slow curveball. He drops down. The hook catches the inside corner. Carl saying it was high. Larry, you're not giving them to us. Why give them to him? Mike Boddicker from Cedar Rapids, Iowa, now resides in Overland Park, Kansas. And Carlton late on that fastball, so he's down in the count 0-2. Yeah, I talked to Carlton after the game last night. He said he just felt like he was stuck. And you know, it's happened now twice with the Sox getting in late and him not getting to bed. I said, you know, you think that could be it after all these years? He said, I don't know. He said, I just feel stuck. Oh, he drops down curveball. Whoa. Tough one right there. So Mike Boddicker strikes out two of the three hitters that he faces in the sixth inning. And it's still Kansas City five and the Sox two after six. A reminder that Thursday, June 20th at 7.05, the Sox host the Texas Rangers, and it'll be Kodak Camera Night. Fans who wish to participate should bring a camera and be at gate one of New Comiskey Park from 5.15 to 5.30. Fans will be able to come onto the field and photograph their favorite White Sox players until 6.10. Tickets are still available at your local Ticketmaster outlet or just dial 312-831-1 Sox. Top of the seventh inning, 5-8-0 and oh for the Royals, 2-4-0 and oh for the Sox. It'll be... David Howard in the top of the order Brian McRae and Kirk Gibson Howard over two tonight 
Corners in close. Takes a strike and the count 0 and 1. Top of the ninth inning at Cleveland, Minnesota 11, Tribe 6. Twins going for 14. Oh, Lordy. That's nasty right there in the count 0 and 2. Well, Wimpy. Your pick to click is hanging right in there in the open. I don't know how they finished up. I was watching them, but he stole Payne Stewart away from me. And yeah, and you got a chance to, to win it. I don't know. As I said, I left, but they were still ahead about three or four holes to play. The Scots right there too. Hoke. That's your guy, right? Okay. I don't even know who he picked, but it's just kind of fun to. Oh, I remember. <laughs> I re don't worry, I remember. Well, one of my guys left. He pulled up. Shark. In, he pulled out in a hurry, didn't he? Yeah. Oh, and to the count. Boy, that course just ate him up today. Outside one and two. I'll tell you that wind came up. And up until the time that I left, Hale Irwin was the one another one of my picks was the only guy that had an under par round. He was two under. He's still right in the hunt. Just off the corner. Melita wanted it, didn't get it. When we go into Minnesota, we'll go out there and play. And as I said earlier, you know, you're going to have to buy your own golf balls this time. Oh, no way. <laughs> you, can't, you can't have any more of mine. That 16th hole, you'll be able to stay there all afternoon on that one. <laughs> Those red striped Rangies, look out. So the count, two balls, two strikes to the switch hitting second baseman David Howard. Right now, let's pause for our station identification. This is WGN-TV Chicago, America's number one sports station. And once again, a reminder, the 9 o'clock news will follow this ball game immediately following tonight's game. Yes, he did. He's gone. Couldn't check it up. He'll grab some bench. Six strikeout for Melito. And we'll check out our upcoming games for you right here over WGN next Saturday against the Texas Rangers. And then Monday, June 24th, the Mariners in town. Also Thursday, June 27th against Seattle. Then at Minnesota, where Wimpy's going to lose all those golf balls on the 28th and 29th. All those games coming your way right here over WGN. Here's Brian McCray. He is two for three tonight. Takes a strike. Splitter. We'll go out there with Bruce Haynes. Remember Brucey? His family and the Griffiths owned the Minnesota Twins. Oh, yeah, sure. Brucey and his family, Debbie, they'll be up there. Head pro there at Hazel Time, Mike Schultz, just a super guy. Melito is quietly doing just another superb job. Off the end of the bat comebacker. Two gone. And as Jeff Torborg said, he's not happy, but meanwhile, he's going to stay right where he is. And as we talked about it earlier, Wimpy, when he was when Melito first voiced his displeasure of being taken out of the rotation, put in the bullpen, it's the first time, really, that he's had any inner emotion, so to speak. And, you know, sometimes, uh, I'm not saying using the, hate is, is, uh, is an adjective here, but uh, an ill feeling can create a lot of stimulation and inspiration sometimes to show somebody, hey, you made a mistake and I'm going to prove it to you. He does seem highly sim stimulated right now. There's a good splitter right Gibson there. Gibson checks it up. Gibson. Oh, he's just been dominating tonight. There Five and a thirds. Look at this. Two yeah. hits. One walk, six strikeouts. You can't get any better than that. Well, you know the best manager I ever played for, Dick Williams. I'll tell you one thing right now. Dick, there was no indifference with him. You either loved him or you hated him. Meanwhile, you played for him either way. Yeah. Okay. That's off the end of the bat. Joey Cora will suck it up over to first. So another one, two, three inning for Melito Perez very quickly. Nothing across. And after six and a half, Kansas City leads it five to two. 
for scoreboard. First in the American League, Boston, Cream, California. This afternoon, 13-3, it was Baltimore over Toronto at Sky Dome, 8-4. Minnesota leading Cleveland in the ninth inning. That's 11-6, going after victory number 14 in a row. Other scores, Milwaukee beat Oakland in game one of a doubleheader, 6-4. No score in the first inning of the second game. The Yankees still leading the Rangers, 2-1 in the fifth inning at Arlington. Detroit and Seattle just getting started at the Kingdome. In the National League, it was San Diego, 6-2 over the Cubs at Jack Murphy Stadium. 4-0 San Francisco over Pittsburgh at Candlestick. 3-1, the Reds. Lou is happy over the Phillies. And the Mets beat the Houston Astros, 6-0 at Shea. Montreal, 2 Atlanta, nothing at Olympic Stadium there in the seventh inning. And the Cardinals and Dodgers just getting ready to start at Dodger Stadium and we're in the bottom of the seventh inning the fans going wild here trying to get something going and Pasqua to start things off for the Sox slow curveball off the plate Danny has walked and he has struck out five runs eight hits no errors for the Royals two runs just four hits no errors for the Sox that's it hard stay fair foul Four home runs in this ball game, three by Kansas City. All three of them coming in the first two innings. Two in the first inning, one by Gibson. Solo shot, two run homer by Tartable. Mike McFarlane, a solo shot in the second. Sox have one homer. Big Frank, number 10. It's inside. Two and one to count. Just off the plate. Boddicker wanted that pitch, didn't get it, and it's three and one. So we'll have to see if Mike's going to keep the same, same pattern that he's had using the fastball for the most part when he was on top in the count. And the off-speed stuff when he was behind in the count. That really has been the way he has pitched for the most part in his career. Now, according to the count, it's 0-2-1-2, then he'll throw the fastball up. Later on deeper he will throw the fastball for the corners as that pitch is out of play. Well, wasn't it Catfish Hunter that really started that? No question. Catfish was the guy that came into the American League and everybody else 203 once said here it is hit it. Catfish started throwing the fastball when he was behind in the count. That's Eisenreich second bounce. He waits for Boddicker to get over there when he had plenty of time to take it himself. And there's one gone. Tough at bat right there for Danny Pasqua. He hit it hard, but right down the first baseline to Eisenreich. Narrowly missing a home run on the first swing he took, so Lance Johnson will hit with one out. Catfish changed the whole style of hitting around when he did that. Yeah, he did. So right. he's the guy we got to blame for that, huh? Yeah. He's the one I got to blame for all those offers. Strikeouts. Uh, Pops uh -oh. it up. McFarland giving chase. He will not be able to get there in time. Good effort by Michael. You know, really, Hawk, that method of pitching really did start in the American League then because my first years in the National League, it was always 2-0, 3-1 uh, fastballs right. every single time. I mean, it, it, so you could get your fair share of hits that way. And that was in the uh, early to mid-70s, of course, and that's when Catfish, I guess, started that other trend in the American League, and a lot of other guys followed suit. Yeah, when you're winning 20 every year, I can't, yeah. they'll, they'll yeah. take a cue from you. <laughs> That's right. And I got better stuff than this guy, and he's winning 20, and I'm not. Inside. That's just like that, that J driver, that jumbo driver. You gave it to a couple of guys. They came over here, play well with it, and pretty soon they sold about 400,000 of them. <laughs> <laughs> now, they, now they're getting rid of them again. That's right. There's yeah, a bunch. This is a good one. This is going to be a base hit. They'll have to stick it in their pocket. Yes. So good speed aboard on a beautiful bunt. There's a true drag right there. Yeah. There is nothing you can do about this one. Eisenreich, not familiar with that first base position. You can see Lance just gets it by the pitcher. Once he does, forget it. 
got to be a signal. Eisenreich just standing there. They had no chance anyway. No. They had, nobody's going to make that play. Good hustle there by David Howard trying to cover first base. So Joey Cora. Joey's got a perfect night working, a single and a walk. Batting 300 will be the hitter with one out. Outfield, straight away and spread out. I'll tell you, they're deep for Coral. Sides are well off the bag on the grass at third. Lance on point. As Joey takes it inside. <laughs> Activity down in the Kansas City pen. There's a the southpaw, Mark Davis. I'm with you, Wimper. Get him in there. And get Boddicker out. That's right. Bring anybody in. Yeah, he's he's just so different from any other pitcher you're going to face during the course of the season. There's Hal McRae. Lance is not on point. As Joey tries to bunt, now they got Lance picked off. Double clutch by Eisenreich, throws it into left field. Lance will have to hold it second. Eisenreich had to double pump it. Too late. Well, Joey here is bunting for a base hit, and he misses. McFarland's got him dead to rights right there, but Lance takes off immediately. And, well, Eisenreich was going to go for the tag, and then he realized, wait a minute, he's not here. So that's when he threw the ball. He really rushed that throw to second base, so Lance was able to beat the play. Kind of the Magoo school of base running right Magoo. there. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Magoo, you've done it again. What <laughs> one, one to count. Sometimes being, being blind works out. Oh, he got a good pitch to bunt right there and try to get just a little too fine with it and lay it right on the line and it's one and two. 14 in a row for the Minnesota Twins a new club record. And Oakland lost the first game of that double header at County Stadium there into the second inning of game two no score. Minnesota now tied with Oakland for first place. One, two. Come backer. They got Lance hung up. Bodeker's going to go right at him like he should. Now he'll give it to him in the pickle. Going in there, Joey. As they tag him now, they cannot get Joey at second. So Lance does his job getting hung up in the pickle, allowing Cora in the second. Yep, that's what you're going to wind up with. And you almost caused a a little jam up there in the infield by Kansas City. Lance did a good job running into the guy who was going to throw to second base, too. On the tag, so he couldn't get Joey Cork, who was hustling. So runner still in scoring position now for Ozzy. There you can see it. Still well, the tag by Seitzer, but Lance tied his legs up right there, so he couldn't make the throw immediately. So it's Ozzy with two out. He's one for two. Slow curveball. Ozzy just watches it dance right in the strike zone. Pick him up, Oz. Big run right there. Big fastball off the glove. Knocked down by Stillwell. Good play by the Kansas City shortstop. That's all he wanted to do. It saves the run. I think Boddicker got a piece of it. It was going by him. Mike Boddicker is a real fine pitcher, real fine fielding pitcher, as well as being a good pitcher to begin with. But he gets himself in good fielding position. Watch it right here. He's trying to square up to the hitter and just tips the ball with his glove, and that prevented it from going into the outfield right there. Stillwell with a good dive to his left. Good play all around for Kansas City to keep that run from scoring. Here comes McRae out of the dugout. Pull him out. Yeah, he's done. <laughs> 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 
Mac, he walks like he's on his last leg, doesn't he? Oh, he walks like Ed George Brett Ailman of a few years ago. That's right. Those hemorrhoids. That's right. He's a good man, I'll tell you. We have talked about it before. He will definitely, as Larry Barnett's going to go out and try to expedite things here, he will definitely bring a a very aggressive style of play to the Royals. One of the best base runners. Boy, you give him a chance to take a shortstop or a second baseman out, and he wouldn't miss. No. It was automatic. He would knock into left field. I tell you, and just Hal and I have talked a lot over the years, and in my opinion, one of the top three managers in baseball is Lou Pinello. And I think that the guy you're looking at right there is going to be an outstanding manager. He and Lou have a lot of the same qualities. They're both tough. No BS with them. They won't take any BS. You better play your fanny off as Tim Rain steps in, takes a curveball low and inside. Interesting, too, because they were both great offensive players, right. too, during their careers. And Lou turned out to be one of the best handlers of a pitching staff, one of the best managers in handling a pitching staff in the big leagues. Ozzy, just a little short lead over there. Ozzy, 10 stolen bases in 14 attempts. So Reigns one for three. Now feel straight up. Has that little nothing pitch. Boddicker didn't get it. So the count two and oh. Lay off the Fosh. Put him on the board, Timmy. There's a Fosh again. Hit right to Eisenreich. Steps on the bag and the side is retired. Nothing across. Couple of hits, no errors. Two men left after seven, five, two. KC. That's the story. Top of the eighth inning. Forty-one thousand eight forty-four in attendance tonight. A jam-packed house as the Sox. Well, they're great about giving away a lot of tickets. More than that in the ballpark. But there you see the attendance leaders. Toronto averaging forty-seven six eighty. Sox second, Oakland third, and then the Boston Red Sox. But Melito Perez has been the story of this ball game for the Sox thus far. Five to two, Kansas City leads it as George Brett steps in, takes a fastball outside. Brett one for three tonight, a single and a run scored. Melito came on back in the second inning. He has worked five and two thirds, giving up no runs, just two hits, one walk, and has six strikeouts. Pulls the string on Brett, and the count one and one. Well, you could see Melito's got great confidence tonight. He is changing speeds with that split finger pitch. Great. He's got an outstanding fastball. Well, he's a man on a mission now. Yeah. That's, That's exactly right. what the situation is with Melito. He's on a mission. He wants to prove to everybody that they're wrong. Meanwhile, Melito just doesn't understand it, that that may have been the whole <laughs> intent and purpose of the thing of that man right there, Jeff Torborg. Yeah. Get him hot. Get him. Give him the pinky. Make That's him right. show some emotion. Make him want to get back in that starting rotation and earn it. That's right. For three years, he didn't really have to earn anything here. He knew he was going to start every fifth day. This is as good as, as we have seen Melito pitch. Slashes that one foul. Souvenir. Well, the one thing about it is Melito is such a wonderful young man that you just pull for him so hard and they tried everything in the world to get him out of those doldrums that he was in as a starter and it certainly appears like this is the method right here yeah oh he's my. gone on a splitter well Georgia grabs some bench seventh strikeout for Perez I'll tell you, there's not a better split finger fastball in the league and all of baseball for that matter when Melito's going right. Look at George Brett. You're talking about a future Hall of Famer right there. Had no chance on that pitch. Strikeout number seven. Look at second time in a row he's gotten George and he doesn't strike out much at all. There's Tartable. He's one for three. Melito's got him twice. 
First time up, Danny hit that two-run homer off Ramon Garcia. Breaking pitch outside. So Danny having a tough time picking up the ball off Perez and the counter one one. Oh and two. Oakland picked up a couple of runs in the top of the second inning lead Milwaukee to zip. Milwaukee hitting at County Stadium. New York at Texas tied at two bottom of the sixth. Oh, Lito wanted that one buckled up a little bit. Carlton wanted it. So the count one and two. When you look at Danny Tartable at the plate, that bat wrapped around his head, you can see the splitter trying to come back. Said it was just a bit outside. And count one and two. The only guy close to the way Tartable hits really is that Julio Franco from the Rangers. Very similar. So one out single by Tartable after the previous pitch. Very, very close. And that'll bring up the first baseman, Jim Eisenreich. Eisenreich one for three. As you can see, maybe jamming that thumb a little bit. Well, he went in there hard on the ground, yeah. Oh, boy. The wrist. Well, he got that split finger pitch up right there, and Tartable hit it hard right in the hole, so that's only the third hit he's given up. Short lead by Tartable. You know, we'll be talking about that U.S. Open. Have you been watching any of it? Just a little. I'll tell you what. You know, one of the most enjoyable things that I've watched in that whole thing is the little vignettes by Jack Whitaker. Jack Whitaker just gets better and better every year. I love those little sayings that he has. I wish they would, he would do more. Oh, yeah. He's great. Well, I was out in Buffalo Grove today. I wanted to say hi to everybody over there at the what Little are you League. What out there? Just have a little clinic. Oh, where are you good? There are kids out there that may not ever get another hit as long as they live. <laughs> oh, did you work well? <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, no. It was fun. <laughs> uh, but but Dave you, Sherwood in charge of that. It was uh, great. If you were telling them that left hand's a power hand, you're right. No. <laughs> Wait a minute. 21 the count to Eisenreich. Five runs, nine hits, no errors for Kansas City. Two runs, six hits, and no errors for the Sox. Left side, Robin. Joey. Rack him up. Third double play of the game turned by the Sox, and that'll end it. Nothing across the hit, no errors. Nobody left after seven and a half. Royals on top, five to two. Story, bottom of the eighth inning. 5-2 Kansas City. Sox will send Ventura, Thomas, Matt Marullo. The schedule hitters to the plate as the Royals have made a pitching change. Southpaw Mark Davis. Wimpy. Well, Mark Davis, 3-1 on the year, but a tough 5-4-0 earned run average in 15 ball games. Has one save, giving up 15 hits in 15 innings. Struck out 15, but walked 13. Robin hits the first pitch fastball in the left center field. Brian McCray races over, makes the catch. One pitch, one out. And a reminder that Friday, June 21st at 7.05, the Sox play host of the Texas Rangers. Be one of the first 20,000 fans to arrive in the park and receive a diamond sock pin, courtesy of all the good folks at Scott Peterson. Here's Big Frank. One for three, his 10th homer. Breaking ball misses. Put that home run right out there in the blue bayou. The background. Fastball strike. Craig Graybeck has come out on deck to hit for Matt Marullo. One one pitch. Change up.
souvenir. And a count one and two. Texas now leading New York four to two. Bottom of the sixth inning in Arlington. Seattle leading the Tigers two nothing. It's the bottom of the first at the Kingdome. Tried to backdoor him right there. Missed way up high. Two and two. Off the glove of McFarland. Defensive change for the Royals at first base. Carmelo Martinez. Payoff pitch. Outside ball four. 53rd walk for Thomas. And there you see his numbers against the Sox. Mark Davis has struggled. 0-1 with a 10-1-3 earned run average in just five and a third innings. Of course, Mark has really scuffled since he came to the American League. Cy Young Award winner in 1989 with San Diego with a 1.85 earned run average to go with 44 saves. So here's little Craig. Pinch hitting from Matt Marullo who was 0 for 3 tonight. Now feel spread out straight away. 5 9 and 0 for Kansas City, 2 6 and 0 for the Sox. See Martinez playing behind Thomas. Craig takes a strike and the count nothing and one. Ball outside. Royals with three runs in the first, two in the second. First bat outing for 21 year old rookie right hander Ramon Garcia. Fastball out of play. So Gray back down one and two. Curveball no. lays off of it. He did not go. Two balls, two strikes with an out here in the eighth. They tell us that Davis has been throwing the ball much better on the road than he does at Royal Stadium. For some reason, he's got some block there, mental block. Has a tough time in front of the home folks. Well, the fans have been booing him. We know that. Pops it up right side. Martinez. Good pitch by Davis coming inside with the fastball. Now tonight's Milk Duds celebrity bat boy and bat girl are 12 year old Jeff Hamilton from LaGrange and 11 year old Jessica Carroll of Eureka Illinois. So congratulations to both Jeff and Jessica on behalf of the White Sox and Milk Duds Candy. So here's Pudge, commander 0 for 3 tonight. He's popped a second, and twice he has struck out. Outfield, deep, spread out, straight up. Curveball outside, and the count 1 and 0.
Fastball off the plate. Two balls, no strikes. With Sammy Sosa, who has come out on deck to hit for Pasqua. 2-0, two, oh, two out. That fastball foul back into the upper deck. So big Frank at first. Martinez playing behind him. There's a big man with his 53rd walk. That fastball. Good pitch by Davis. Looks like he turned that one over just a little bit, running it away, and Carlton is having to foul it off. Now the 2 2 count. They faced Mark Davis in 1985, and he was with the Giants. And I'll tell you what, he had great stuff. He had a fastball not overpowering, but that hook of his was dynamite. Fastball high as Big Frank takes off, he'll steal it. All right. You know, it's ironic, but I was in the clubhouse today in the training room, and Frank was telling us about how he's got to round off that game of his. He's got to steal some bases. He said he was going to steal a base tonight, I swear. Oh, he can run. Yeah. I'll tell you what. A couple times he's gone, he's had a chance to uh, do some damage. Tell you what, Pudge can get on. You got the tying run coming to the plate here. And now McFarlane and Mark Davis have some trouble getting locked up on the signs. Look, Marks, 3 2. This is what I want. Just don't give a sign. That's right. Just tell him you got to go out there and you have a problem. Five, two, Kansas City here in the eighth. Fast ball. That's a base hit in the center field. Here comes Big Frank. He's going to score. It's a five-three game. Yes. Carl Fisk gets his 23rd RBI of the season and credit that run to Frank Thomas. Aggressive base running, sealing his first base of the season. Check it out, it's at fastball. Good, good spot there by Davis. Pudge just goes out there and punches out there in the center field for a base hit. Nice job of hitting by Carlton. And Hal McRae is out to the mound right now. He wants a right-hander. It'll probably be Jeff Montgomery. He's been their closer this year. All right, the bullpen gates will indeed open. Mark Davis will depart, and we'll be back to give you the numbers on the new Kansas City Royal pitcher right after this. Comes out to work for the Royals here with two out in the eighth inning. One run in. It's a 5-3 ball game. He's 1-2 and two on the season with a 3-2-4 earned run average in 25 games. 13 saves, certainly the leader of that staff. Giving up 33 hits in 33 and a third innings. Eight walks just and 34 strikeouts. He can really punch you out. He's 5'11", 180 po 80 pounder from Cincinnati, Ohio, 29 year old. And he's got an excellent assortment of breaking stuff. Good hard slider, good curveball. Not an overpowering fastball, but he mixes it in there nicely. Well, if he's on the same team with Mike Boddicker and he listens to Boddicker, he'll even be better. He is indeed a, a good one. There's a curveball to Warren Newsom hitting for Sammy Sosa. 5-3, Kansas City here in the bottom of the eighth inning. 5-9-0 for the Royals, 3-7-0 for the Sox. Fisk at first, Carlton just knocking in his 23rd run of the year. Gas yes, can't get it. 
Lionel Boddicker, seven innings of work, two runs, six hits, two walks, at five strikeouts. So a strong performance by the 33-year-old veteran right-hander. We said earlier, he is fun to watch pitch. Curveball over. So Newsom down on the count, one and two. Warren out of Noonan, Georgia. Pretty good lead by Fisk. Breaking ball on top of it. Stillwell on the run, throws him out, and it'll retire the side. But the Sox score a run on a hit. No errors, one man left. And after eight, it's 5 3 Royals. That's the story. Top of the ninth inning. 5 3 Kansas City and some defensive changes for the Sox moving in at third base. In place of Robin Ventura, it'll be Craig Grayback. Now moving over to first base. It'll be Robin. So Robin at first base and in right field. Warren Newsom. So the Sox defensively range and left Johnson in center Newsom in right around the horn Ventura at first Cora at second Ozzie at short Graybeck at third and a battery of Fisk. And Melito Perez who came on back in the second inning has given up no runs three hits one walk and has seven punch outs. For Kansas City here in the top of the ninth, it'll be Seitzer, McFarland, and Stillwell. Kevin 0 for 3. He's bounced to second, fly to center, and bounced to second. Breaking ball strike from Perez. Orioles doing all their damage in the first two. The two home runs in the first inning, a solo shot by Kirk Gibson. A two run blast by Danny Tartable deep into the right center field bleachers. There's a splitter strike and the count quickly 0 and 2 to Seitzer. Good pitch by Melito. He did not chase it. And a reminder on Sunday, July 7th, all kids who come to see the Sox host the Minnesota Twins at 135 will receive a baseball glove courtesy of all the good folks at Coca-Cola. Tickets are available through your local Ticketmaster outlet or call 1-312-831-1 Sox. Hard hit. Great back. Yes. You say it so many times, Hawk, every time Craig Grayback gets in a ball game, something good happens for the Sox. And here's a terrific play moving to his left. Seitzer got the hit of the bat out here and just nailed it in the hole. It looked like a sure base hit, but Grayback, look at a couple quick steps he takes. The ball was already past him. Gets up and uses that strong throwing arm to throw him out. Super job. So a beautiful play by the little guy. And here's Mike McFarland. Mike is homered. He was hit by a pitch and he struck out. Now feel bunched a bit, swung around to the left. Graybeck well back at third. Breaking ball strike from Melito. Little slurve he throws up there. Indeed, he has been a man on a mission since being put in a pen. One and one the count. McFarlane just 27 years old. Good looking young catcher. There's a strike in the count one and two. Now throw in the dreaded splitter. There it is. He'll grab some bench. 
Strikeout number eight for Perez. It's the old gotcha pitch. Look at it. Looks like a fastball. Bottom drops out. McFarland came a little closer than the other Royal hitters at making contact right there, but still he's over the top. And you see those numbers. Seven and a third innings, just three hits. One walk and eight strikeouts. Terrific outing tonight for Melito. He has given the Sox a chance to come back and win this ball game. Kurt Stillwell steps in, takes a strike. Kurt one for three. Single and a run scored in the second inning. Hit into a double play in the fourth. And he bounced out three to one in the sixth. As you're looking at the Sox ninth, it'll be the lower third of the order. Schedule hitters are Johnson, Cora, and Ozzie. One one pitch from Melito. Souvenir on the splitter, and the count moves to one and two. Checking a couple of National League scores. Cardinals leading the Dodgers 1-0. That's in the bottom of the second. That's Chavez Ravine. Mets shut out Houston 6-0. That's Shea. Montreal shut out Atlanta 2-0 up at Olympic Stadium. And the center field. Lance is right there. So Melito Perez, what a job he has done tonight. My goodness. Giving up no runs on just three hits, one walk, eight strikeouts. He gives the Sox a chance to do something in the bottom of the ninth as they trail it 5 3. Kurt Stillwell over to Martinez, and the ball game is over. So Montgomery retires the side in order here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Final, Kansas City wins it 5 3. Wimpy and I'll be back to wrap it up right after this.